Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a very generous introduction. It's the kind of introduction that my mother-in-law would have liked to hear but never believe. <laughs> God rest her soul. Uh, I think the cue here from just the way the room is laid out is that Exchange for Media wants to go wide, not deep. And I think broadly that's what I'll do in my presentation as well. Uh, I was flipping through this excellent report and I was telling Naval that my presentation is more or less a formality now because if you really want to go through what I have, you might as well read the report. Um, but I've been around the block a few years and I'm, I'm almost as old as having remembered wanting to keep a dinosaur as a pet before they went extinct. And when I joined Hindustan Lever 24 years ago, at that time, everybody in the room knew what marketing meant. Uh, you know, as a placeholder, everybody had common knowledge of the subject matter. Decision makers were more proven and experienced. That's the difference. With the rise of programmatic advertising, that changed. And it changed in the sense that um, the decision makers still had to look very educated and they got it. But the pace of technical evolution was such that in the last 10 to 15 years, probably by the time the conference ends today, something new would have popped up. And so basically, um, it was a very humbling experience because the junior most folks in the room usually know best. And that's not how uh, you know, management hierarchies work, that is not how marketing hierarchies work. Nevertheless, uh, like I said, I'll try and keep it wide. My experience is across many sectors. I've spent time in CPG. I went to Alcobev for a while. I was in payments with Visa. I spent time as CMO for Star Sports. Last two stints, I was global head of marketing at Royal Enfield. And now I had a 60,000 crore business, startup commercial vehicles uh, as CMO. As my wife keeps joking, with progressing age, the only two verticals remaining are insurance and pharmaceuticals. <laughs> I guess at some point in time, I might get there as well. Uh, my intention is not to talk about programmatic advertising because as I said, every one of you probably knows it, the report has it all. But I think as practitioners, we fall into a common trap. And that trap is that we start looking at it from the vantage point of what's in it for me. So the near horizon is known to everybody. The second horizon is rarely known to anybody. And the client and partner dialogue tends to become fractured. Because as somebody is saying in the panel, I want this month's sales, the next month's projections. And uh, the, the, I won't say the tragedy, but the complexity with programmatic is that there is data and there is jargon. And so basically, when in doubt, they open up an Excel sheet. And then he's like, oh my god, I'll your data. Dikha hai. So what do I do now? Um, in my present business, uh, we span a very large set of verticals within commercial vehicles. So if you're buying a pickup or a micro truck or a mini truck or a van, it's very different from buying a construction machine or a heavy truck or an intermediate carrier uh, or indeed a bus. So it spans B to C, B to B and b 2 b to c And in all endeavors, we are making accelerated progress <coughs> when it comes to programmatic advertising. I think from my vantage point, it's more important to share how that impacts my advertising per se, not in terms of just the efficiency metrics. Thank you. And I think that uh, it's a race that's never over. So conventionally, when we used to do like I said back in the day when I started life, there was a script, there was a 30 second ad, there was a campaign and then this 360 thing around it. Everybody had that hub and spoke kind of a chart. Campaign got done, launch got established, move on to the next thing. But unfortunately that doesn't work anymore. So what works is how progressively are you thinking about, like I said, the second horizon and that's an inconclusive debate. Where do I point? Okay. So, you know, advertising works. Advertising works a great deal. I was in 
Qatar day before yesterday for the Argentina Croatia match. And I felt like I was the richest man in the world because I had tickets. And everybody I was meeting outside Lucel Stadium was advertising for their need for a ticket. And they were quoting amounts which probably would have busted my provident fund. And I said, you know, okay, fine. But my son would have left and gone away, so I had to go and see the match. It was a good match, though. The, the good news here is that advertising is shaping up like a bouquet. And there are variety of options that people exercise. The problem is that everybody regresses to the average. And the average is the data that's published everywhere, including the report, and it's a responsibility that they discharge. But the average has a full spectrum, right? So there is the extreme positive outlook, and then there is the very perverse negative outlook as well. And everybody tends to look at the average and you know beyond. We are a hopeful country, we are a young country, everybody thinks there is a chai yoga, but then when things don't work out quite well, which is why I would like to spend some time as we go ahead on what is the important part in terms of the planning exercise. From my, my standpoint, <clears throat> I think General Eisenhower said, you know, plans are useless, but planning is very important. <laughs> because, you know, no, no sooner do you actually start engaging with the realities of the marketplace, the plans all change. But if you have a planning mindset, and if you look at data from a planning input standpoint rather than a functional you know, execution standpoint, the perspective will be very different. So just the good news is that India is growing. We are uh, assuredly the highest growth ad market in the country. Uh, I was reading the report and I thought, oops, my figures might be 1 billion up or down. But usually up is a good news. Um, the positive aspect here is that there's a lot of headroom when it comes to programmatic advertising. I think the conviction levels are high. Execution detailing is relatively mediocre across the board. I think the purses will open up further. And somebody in the previous panel was saying times are going to get tough. I think India is the only $1 trillion and above economy that's growing at some what You can shave off 0.5% plus or minus, but it's growing at roughly 7%. Which means every 10 years, India will add another India to itself. And this is a country where 40 crore Indians are less than 20 years of age. Nowadays, when somebody calls me uncle, I don't mind. We all know everybody is calling me uncle nowadays. Uh, every trillion dollars of GDP that gets added changes India. It changes India in never before seen ways. People's response to brands, their practice in terms of what they buy, how they buy. And we are seeing that change even in commercial vehicles, which was considered to be the bastion of, you know, below the line advertising, uh, below the line promotions. People want to get a feel of the vehicle. They ask people. It's a it's a running shop on wheels. People did not think that online transactions would become a reality. And I'm happy to say that in the last uh, one year, we've got to a level where almost between 12 to 20 percent, depending on our subcategory effectively four large companies within the company, it's happening purely through digital means. Uh, what happens next? This is basically my money chart. After this, you can go off to sleep. Uh, if you're executing against a data opportunity, if that is your definition of programmatic, and if you take the conventional, but in my view, a slightly myopic or even narrow view, where it is a machine or an algorithm or a program that decides what to buy, when to buy, and where to show, then I think that's a constricted view of the opportunity. But if you look at it as a way to execute on all available data, if you're looking at it as data strategy first, and then myriad uses of it, one of them is more efficient, more return efficient, more spontaneous, more activated media buying then we are talking about a very different set of opportunities and challenges, both. So I'll try and cover some of that. <clears throat> the world has changed. And uh, in the last one year, we did three significant launches. Uh, we did Ace Electric Vehicle. It's a, it's a mini truck. It's called Chota Hathi. We launched uh, the electric vehicle version of it, largely for captive users. Flipkart, Amazon, all of them are large customers of ours. And we pre-announced 39,000 vehicles even before the first one rolled off the assembly line. In every market of ours, in every vertical that we operate in, there are customers 
who are also owner entrepreneurs. So the driver who gets you your LPG cylinder, or the newspapers to your doorstep, or the bricks with which your house was made, or your children go to school, everybody is actually driving a business, but they are tech enabled. Uh, last week, Siddheshwar, my colleague, is in the room. We were in Jaipur and we went to an industrial area. And out of curiosity, I was asking them what, what phones did they have. Without exception, all of them had smartphones. And they had things like BBC News, which you know shocked me because it rubs against the conventional stereotype of a person who's driving a daily load operator for a you know, mini truck. Now, in the last one year, in all of these launches, we have gone aggressively vernacular but purely online. So Jagrat may have been a part of the mix and NTV.com may have been a part of the mix. And I think this constriction in terms of one or two platforms dividing the earth is not going to happen in India. It may seem like that. It already is changing. And if anybody is in doubt globally as well, look at what happened in the world in the year 2020 or right after COVID when everything was boom. And now across the world it looks like it's falling to gravity and it's going bust. But I think we must have a local fit to solutions. And the reason it's important is not because I'm trying to, to communicate in the right in the right language or in the right context. It is because the data stack itself changes when you cross borders even within India. Andhra Pradesh is very different from Bihar. Bihar is very different from Jharkhand. And the applications that we do, Jharkhand may be a major mining state. I may be selling tons of tippers and key account management becomes a focus there. Go to Bihar where lots of first-time users and intenders who want to just get a vehicle because they're not getting viable employment, they may want to run a business and earn a living out of that. So the way in which you approach this data, an intender is not an intender is not an intender. They have very different uh, backgrounds and contexts. And I think this is something to celebrate where India is concerned. Right. So from a platform standpoint, this is basically what programmatic is. I may have done a bit of a shorthand here. But if you know the features, the inventory, you know, if your tech stack is ready and if you are conscious of data, full knowledge of data is impossible. I'm forgetting the name of an Argentinian author who wrote the slimmest novel. I think it's one paragraph. Uh, it's called something La Science, uh, the science of maps, where he says, you know, I want to go deeper, I want to go deeper, I want to go deeper till they descend to the flat earth. And they say, this is the world around you. You have to lift up a little bit and get that perspective because the real world is not a map. So if you have the features, the inventory, the data and the algorithm, then what you must do on the planning side is what I have put on the other end of the chart, is what is your inventory quality? Who are you doing business with? What is the way in which you balance the organic and the inorganic, which is often lost because of this rush of, you know, jargon? And is data and the compression that marketers feel in the short term because of the pressures of evidence which are data supported, is that subsidizing creativity on the other end. The creativity now is an unfashionable word. Again, I'm really revealing my age. They're like, how does it matter? You, know, you have to have the right pipe, you the right time. The intender has to be able to click through. But click through to what? And what is the idea that you're rubbing that up? against and is it going to build a taller structure in terms of the brand and in this entire magic where is your digital anchor is it your website is it your social platforms is it e-commerce sites are there marketplaces which are going to become important and it's like juggling with many balls in the air but people tend to believe that whatever works for my sales results whatever gets me the most efficient leads whatever gets me the most efficient conversion is best and then you realize three months down the line you're looking at the rear view mirror and the scenario has completely changed. And in our lead generation exercises we find that the plateau comes time and again. It's like a cascading plateau. You know, it's, not, it's not one hump to cross every month. So if there is a change in, let's say, the monetary policy changes by, by 25 basis points, the interest rate, the contraction that we will feel in people having liquidity, or the availability of finance will dramatically change the scenario. If fuel prices go up or down, CNG versus diesel, it will dramatically change the mix that I have to sell. And so these things need to be factored on top of your programmatic plans. That's the point I was trying to make. Cool. 
I'm heavily jet lagged and hence heavily nicotine and caffeine induced as well. Um, I'm not jet lagged because of the time difference, I'm jet lagged because my son didn't let me sleep. He wanted to tell me all about Messi. He was embarrassed that I didn't know enough and somebody will have a conversation with me and I won't know. <coughs> right. Now this is the this is the the tackling of the many challenges. Everybody knows this. I mean I think the average knowledge here is is above you know, above par, you could all run your own programs. But, so I, I'm not going to spend time explaining each. But to me, uh, from, a, from a marketing ownership perspective, the importance is what is the data plan and what is the publisher plan. Usually the practice, and I encounter this time and again, is, you know, the publisher plan first, the data plan second. Because people in turn, are buying inventory, they in turn have handshakes with a number of platforms. I think from an earnestness perspective, you need to change that equation. You need to look at all the data. I mean, everybody's spoken about the imminent sunset on, on cookies and the privacy curtain will come down and so on and so forth. But that to my mind is a matter of specifics. I think the generality is more important. What is the data with which you can make actionable outcomes happen? And if you understand your data, nowadays they have a zero party data as well, but at least first party, zero party, whichever party it is, are you in the party in the first place? That's the important part. But then, are you able to take that data and marry that to all the other harvesting of third party data, overlay it, and then come to this another slightly unfashionable word nowadays, which is actionable insight. And. Uh, the number of times, if I if I if I earned a dollar every time somebody confuses a fact for an insight, I would be neck to neck with Elon Musk almost, because they mouth facts and they taunt on that to be an insight. But if you don't, as a client, I'm speaking as a client. If I don't have a clear view of what my uh, customer intention is, if I don't know who my customer is then any amount of buying data or you know overlaying third party data on my data will not help me. So I think the responsibility, much more than the partners, much more than the entire ad tech space put together, lies on big or small you may be, but are you consciously thinking about your customer? Uh, because like I said, in our business, the reality changes in a matter of days, and yet the momentum is such you see, let me give you a perspective. If suppose I am a fleet owner with 10 trucks versus I am a household with three shampoo brands, let's say. If I buy a fourth shampoo brand, I am adding to the repertoire as they say. But if I buy two trucks, those two trucks are going to stay for a period of seven to 10 years. They will have servicing contracts. They will buy spare parts. Entire generations of drivers will be trained on those trucks, so they will forever prefer that brand X versus another brand Y. And so it's not only a matter of, oh, it's a good deal, or oh, you know what, I was reading Jagran.com and this banner ad popped in and I clicked and filled a form. Uh, and I'm not belittling uh, consumer products or FMCG, which is where I began life. But it's a very different dynamic as you cross different verticals within, let's say, the commercial vehicle spaces. Let's take the case of buses. We all send our children to school, they go in a bus, their fuel efficiency and economy is one part of the mix which is important to the business owner. But safety and security is equally important to me as a person who is eventually paying for that bus seat. Uh, if I am selling a construction machine, a tipper, it goes back and forth in highway construction time and again over the same journey but it's on flat ground. If I sell the same dipper for mining, it goes on an incline like this. And so gradability and loadability is important. Now when I'm making an advertising campaign, I cannot get to that level of detailing when it comes to an interface which is run digitally. And so what follows thereafter, how I handhold people, how I land them to a site, how they get the full 360 view on how the business is going to be supported, those are very important factors which are beyond just programmatic execution. So I'm not saying this is not important. I'm saying it is important provided the customer, that is the client, has that perspective. 
I have already spoken about this. It's an iconic brand called Ace. It's a mini truck. It's also called Chota Hathi. It is a nation builder. It is a category builder. Before 2005, when Ace was launched, everything from a bullet car to a three-wheeler was used for intercity transport last mile. With the arrival of this, everything changed. But, in, you know, and honestly, before I joined Tata Motors, I was, I had a blind spot, I couldn't see trucks. After I accepted the offer and when I was serving my notice, every second vehicle on the road appeared to be a truck. <laughs> my father, who is not very proficient, told me one day, he said, you just not going to go to Google Man. He didn't realize it was adaptive and therefore he was looking for that new he was throwing more to him. He thought it was because I was doing a great job. <laughs> I haven't told him the truth till now. So we must build customer stacks around the utility that the vehicle provides. And in this case, when we launched EV, it was a huge leap forward, right? Because, you know, while Tata Motors is doing exceedingly well in the passenger vehicle space for, for electric vehicles, the, the way in which an electric vehicle works is dramatically different from the way in which an internal combustion engine works. First of all, you're not sitting on top of that engine. It vibrates less. It's more fuel efficient in, in different ways. The sensorials are different. The charging economics is entirely different. Now, if I am not an intender, if I have never conceived of the possibility of buying an electric truck, uh, just interacting with that advertising is not enough. So I have to dig deeper and mine where that possible opportunity, including upgrades, for example. So then there has to be a CRM strategy that lives and marries the programmatic strategy in this sense, right? Secondly, uh, there is no single data insight that is viable here. You have to keep, it's, it's skeletoscopic, so you change the same set of data points, give you different realities, but then you must go to people, dealer sales executives, territory sales managers who know what's happening at the last mile and then you know, bring that back into your uh, origination, into the plan origination. Now, another thing, is you know programmatic for the most part is advertising online. And that's the way, that's the shorthand that let's say my bosses who are not in the marketing function would understand it to be. But like I said, if it's about acting on a data strategy, then a host of other things that you do. We are big spenders on, on outdoors. That's where our business is. People who drive trucks are on the roads. It doesn't require a genius to figure that out. Uh, they see the stimulus is all on the road. Of course, they have a handheld device and they're getting information there. How do you marry this with their life on the road? And by the way, it's not only truck drivers. There's a hundred billion dollar market in terms of brokerage. There are fleet owners who are gigantic corporations and then again a two truck owner or a single truck owner. They are consumers in their own, own right and across categories. So there are there are opportunities for that stimulus to reach them. We ourselves are looking to advertise on a fleet of buses, including EV buses, that we have sold to several municipal authorities, cities and governments. So the advertising mix is programmatic. If you take a wide lens view of it, if you take a narrow lens view of it, then it's only about making my digital advertising more prominent and more effective. So this is what we did, you know. Like I said, we've been spending a lot we got to a programmatic uh, layer by layer execution on where to put the holding. It's a simple holding, uh, you know, if you go to a tier 4 town, there will probably be the most prominent city centre and then the whole town grows around it. In metros, the realities are very different. But what we are doing is every road is not the same road. Where is the concentration? Where is the economic activity? So for example, in Bombay, the outer city is very prominent when it comes to warehousing, uh, you know, and, and places like Diwandi, like Banwell, they are major hubs for transporters. And so if I put a smart sign on Marine Drive near Cafe Coffee Day, it's not going to do a great deal for my business. And intuitively you would understand this, but where exactly are the toll knackers? Where do people go to get CNG? This kind of information overlay helps both accurate placement but also rapid execution because you know where you need to go. Another area in which we are working very aggressively is influencer uh, videos and that also we are selecting from a leaderboard 
more or less programmatically. When I buy a truck, I look at everything. I look at what's the cost going to be, how much finance am I going to get, what's my EMI payout, if I am the driver, if I hire a driver, what's the cost? Oh, tire pressure, somebody was making a joke about tire pressure, but tires are a very, very important and significant consumable. Uh, probably the second most important consumable after fuel. So if my tires wear out fast, I'm not making as much money on my lifetime. And of course the safety angle where, you know, India leads uh, the number of fatalities on the road. So, you know, these are very important features for us. But what we are doing now with influencers is in three tiers. National influencers, whom we select not only for their followership and viewership, but also engagement, so views per video, etc. Then what are they doing by way of comparisons? Who are they talking? What is their language? What is their editorial style? And we don't prescribe that at all. We are making opportunities for them to come to our service centers, to our manufacturing locations, uh, to these trucking hubs and look at the effective life cycle of a product, talk about it, make those comparisons. What is X and what is Y? They are seemingly spec to spec, eyeball to eyeball. But over the course of a five year lifetime, it can be very different. And today, you know, digital and mobility are converging also in terms of telematics. So one of the fastest growing areas in digital exploration is the digital twin of a vehicle. You are plugged to every corner and sitting at a laptop, they can know what is the root efficiency, what is the driving behavior, what is the tire pressure for that matter, and several other things. And so it's important to monitor these from a return on, uh, you know, return on investment point of view, but also to give you peace of mind. Usually with the arrival of a cell phone, people do track and trace. Is what now, kidney there in Ponchoge, and then they divide the total distance traveled by the cost of fuel, and you get an average. We do that with people we hire for driving our vehicles, for example. But there are so many layers beyond this that if we could select the right intention on these influencers, some people are experts at explaining mileage, some people are experts in or have built a credible case for explaining safety features, there are others. I, I got I got tire pressure as well. <laughs> so uh, there, I'm going to skip through these. These are more uh, these are more possibilities. Uh, I think uh, we have regularly underestimated gaming uh, for a country where, like I said, 40 crore people are less than 20 years of age, and effectively 50 to 55 crore smartphones. I think this is potent and it's waiting to happen. Um, on video, there are a variety of numbers. I have this number. There's a, I saw more or less the same number here. If people are spending 4.7 hours on their cell phones, uh, an average, that's humongous amounts of opportunity to give them more, build association, not only sales. Uh, I like the idea of connected TVs. I think it also helps us to jump across screens. And there is a very large affluent audience, even in my business, which is commercial vehicles. And I think the, the monthly active users are way more promising, and the lift we get is way more promising here. Uh, I think I've already spoken about the technology piece. Just one last thing on what we're doing further now. You see, some people have spoken about omnichannel realities. I want to know exactly my consumer, no matter where he is and where you know, they may happen to be. But the problem is, within my lines of business, there is a lot of cross-visitation. Somebody is not sold on buying only a mini truck, they may go up to a pickup. If they are going to a pickup, why not buy a 407? If they are buying a container truck, why not consider one reefer because you know what, refrigerated transport is booming. So they are always in this sort of zone, there is not an exact point, they are thinking in terms of budgets, in terms of applications as we call them. And so we look at cross-visitation between lines of business, we look at which products are yielding better conversions, which products have higher page visits. Uh, bounce rates, of course, are a reality that we know. But at the end of it is, all of this gives me more foresight and more actionable insight into who my customers are. Uh, and we have found that, generally speaking, across uh, auto, car trading, mobility per se, has much more actionable, uh, because it's, you know, for most people who own a truck, and are making a living uh, driving a truck, it's probably their most, single most 
valuable possession, probably even more than the house they own, if they own a house. So, from a fleet owner who may be 5,000 crores turnover to, like I said, a mini truck driver, uh, the intent, the degree of emotional involvement in that purchase is very high. When I came here, people told me passenger vehicles are an emotional I was coming from Royal Enfield, so they said, you know, when you buy a bullet motorcycle, it's a highly emotive purchase, but commercial vehicles are not like that. But I have learned through one year of consumer work, that's not the case. If you go to the smallest villages and towns in India, they decorate their truck. You know, they, 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 there are sticker markets where they buy stickers to decorate them. Who, who, who decorates their car with full mati and stickers? So there is a high involvement and many, many, many fleet owners never sell the first truck with which they make a beginning because it's basically raised them from nothing to something significant. I'm going to skip this. This was an interesting case study about how France, because of air, airline delays during the summer, they were, Canal Plus was able to you know, use that opportunity to sell their shows of different time durations. You can see that later. Last but not the least, uh, you know, the tough parts I didn't cover, I just kept them as future gazing. Uh, but it is true that uh, there is going to be more and more acute pressure on the responsibility for data, not only data privacy, because that, you know, in, in both these jobs, as I look at global markets, we know GDPR, etc., was a reality for a time uh, across Europe and elsewhere. But what's happening now is you have to be responsible beyond the current uses of data. You have to look at the potential uses of data, and I think that's going to take a lot of intellectual energy. You have to keep learning. You can never rest on your current understanding. Um, there is a generational divide that I saw. The younger people in the room have a responsibility to speak up, because this is not like business as usual. It's different, it's tech-enabled, and it keeps changing. So I think there is a need for active dialogue. Um, I think there is also partner-to-partner -partner conversations Somebody mentioned about walled gardens, but I find the biggest walled gardeners, gardens are in vendor partners. They blink at you if you mention another case study or an example as if the other people didn't exist. But I think there's a lot of learning that needs to be brought to the table saying, hey, these guys are doing a smart job, why don't I do it and why don't I in turn get my client to do that? And the last thing which I'm, I may have given you some evidence, so I'm never afraid to be embarrassed because in my learning, particularly when it comes to programmatic advertising or digital media per se, if you're not willing to be embarrassed, you are guaranteed to be embarrassed. This is, this is a truth of life. So keep asking, and in that moment you may seem dumb, but hopefully as time goes by, you'll look intelligent. So with that, I'll close, and if there are any questions, I can take that now. Thank you.